The rubber band was invented in England in the middle of the 19th century. The key to its success, of course, is flexibility. A rubber band can be stretched around items of various shapes and sizes to hold them together. So in the rubber band industry, the possibilities for expansion are numerous. Rubber bands come in handy for a whole bunch of things. If you have a bunch of anything, a rubber band can keep it together. Production of rubber bands starts with natural rubber. These spongy slabs have been made from the sap of rubber trees. Natural rubber has greater elasticity than the synthetic kind, making it a better choice for rubber bands. A worker measures and pours rubber processing oil into a kneader machine. He adds powdered pigment, in this case yellow and white for a pale yellow shade. He feeds several rubber slabs to the kneader's spiral-shaped jaws. The spiraling blades intersect to break up the rubber and blend in the other ingredients. The kneading process generates heat which softens the rubber, making it easier to form into dough. The kneader spits out rubber dough chunks. Next, a giant rolling pin transforms the dough into wide, thin pieces. He slices the strips and bundles them. In this form, it will be easier to control the weight of the rubber in relation to chemicals that are added next. They roll the rubber with a precise amount of sulfur and other chemicals that strengthen the rubber and make it more elastic. They then roll the rubber very thin. A worker twists and cuts it into small bundles that fit into the opening of an extruding machine. It forces the still warm and malleable rubber through dyes to shape it into long hollow tubes. The extruder injects air and talcum powder into the tubes to keep the walls from collapsing and sticking together while warm. The tubes cool down in a trough of water and they deflate as the injected air dissipates. Next, these aluminum poles will serve as molds for the tubes during curing, giving them the correct shape and diameter. The worker slides the tubes onto the molds. The talcum powder injected into the tubes during their extrusion will also act as a release agent, keeping them from sticking to the molds during curing. They load the tubes into a steam oven and the intense heat vulcanizes the rubber to boost its tensile strength and elasticity. Out of the oven, workers inject air between the tubes and the molds, making it easier to peel the now vulcanized tubes off. They rinse the rubber tubes to remove talcum powder residue. There's so much that the water turns milky white. They hang the rubber tubes to drain away some of the water. By the time they're ready to cut, they're a bit too dry. So a worker splashes water onto them. With the tubes moistened, the next operation will run more smoothly. He feeds several tubes at once to a rotating blade which carves them. This creates elastic bands that are exactly the same width. In this case, that's 1.5 millimeters, an average thickness for a rubber band. With this system, they can cut a half a million rubber bands in an hour. It doesn't take long for the inventory to pile up. There are millions of rubber bands here. A worker scoops them up and examines each one for defects. Once approved, all that's left is the packaging. The rubber bands ride a conveyor that releases them in increments into plastic bags. It has taken about three hours to produce this bag of rubber bands. On a normal day, this factory generates 40 million elastics. That's a lot by any stretch of the imagination.